And finally, on this episode of Plus Events is on the work for mental health, which was themed the mind behind the max. Renowned psychiatrist and therapist Dr. Memuna Yusuf Kadrik held her maiden mental health conference to educate women on these issues. The event had panel sessions with notable key industry leaders and mental health ambassador. <laughs> Around 8 in 10 women experience some form of mental health illness, including clinical depression, anxiety, drug abuse, and depression in their lifetime. To tackle this, renowned psychiatrist and therapist Dr. Memuna Yusuf Kadrik has held her maiden mental health conference to educate women on these issues. The event themed the mind behind the max created a platform to educate the public on mental health issues and also review the recently passed mental health bill. So we're having mental health co um, conversations today. One of the most difficult as Africans to have, you know, we have the stigma around mental health issues and so they're the most difficult conversations you'd ever find people having. But we're making it normal here. We're sitting here today, people would share their experiences will normalize the conversation. It has to become a normal thing, just as you're discussing your physical health issues. If you have a headache, you quickly say to someone, I have a headache. But if you're depressed, you will find it hard to ex you know, express yourself about that issue. And it's something that you should be able to share so you can get help. We are, at this time, even during the elections, you see a lot of provocations flying around. We don't even understand the balance of respect anymore. So. It's important that we have this kind of conversations. We know how to come in. We express, you know, how important it is to be empathetic at this time towards any issue at all that anyone is having. So I am pleased to be here. It's really a good initiative because, you see, the mindset, a lot goes in underneath it. You can see someone smiling and all of that. You don't know what that person is actually going inside. So I'm actually happy about this initiative to actually bring more awareness and enlightenment that People should please remember to be kind. You never can tell what someone else is dealing with because mental health is beyond the physical. I think it's very important. I think Dr. May has done an incredible job making this happen. And I'm here to support her because I think that this is the kind of conversation we should be having. And we should be more open and honest about the reality of it. Well, I'm really excited about this conference. Mental health is a burning issue right now. It's affecting all members of our population, especially our young people. And we have to collaborate as a nation, ensure that our teachers, our professionals, our HR managers, every spectrum of society has to understand mental health and recognize that it's a critical issue and address it urgently. Truth be told, to share your vulnerability is often regarded as weakness. But here's the thing, to share your weakness is a sign of strength. So I think because we come from such a conservative society where, you know, the patriarchy of it all is that you must be a man. You must not cry. You must not shed tears. You must not show emotions. You must be strong and steadfast. I mean, times are changing. Now is the time where all of us need to support each other. In terms of, I'm speaking about gender here, gender-based. Men, if they say women supporting women, that's such a popular hashtag, a popular slogan. But you've not really heard of men supporting men. You know, in case you're wondering which gender I'm associated, I am a bros, I have blockers. Anyway, away from that. I am also in some sort of way, therapist, guidance counselor, sounding board, lexicon to all of my friends. And it will shock you because everybody brings that appearance to me, I'm a problem solver. The thing is that people come into my life to take, 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 take. At times I wonder, because I give so much, I wonder who am I, who am I really going to take from that will really give. It's very hard to find. Now, as men, let's cut out that narrative of we have to be emotionless. Ah, ah, mwah. Mama, how are you? 
haven't seen her in a minute. We have to cut out the narrative of not showing emotions, of not breaking down, of not showing vulnerability and even strength. Because, you know, you might think that vulnerability sounds like weakness, but guess the, here's the deal. It, does, it is courage and truth. And it is strength embedded in all of that courage when you do express your vulnerability. So as all the men out there, I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with you when you break down. Because we all need to break. We're humans. We have to. As I said earlier, when things are falling out of place, they may actually be falling into place. Uh, first of all, I won't say I love what is happening. Because mental health for a very long time has taken a back seat in the whole Nigerian space. Um, at some point, even... The Suicide Act, for instance, treats people who suffer from mental health issues as criminals. And I love that events like this is happening. Um, even though some has happened in the past, one of this particular grade and, you know, um, magnitude should be celebrated. So, yes, I am happy that the, 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 the conversations about mental health is taking a front seat. I think it's an innovation. Because when you look at the things going on, especially post-COVID, one, one billion in eight billion people, in fact, one billion, two billion in eight billion people have mental health disorders. So that, put plainly, one in four of us needs care. And so we need to elevate the discussion to the center. And that's what Dr. May and the mental health conference have done. They've made it, it's no longer a fringe discussion. It's at the center of policy. And why is, it, why is this important? When you look at economic capacity of a country, you're looking at its resourcing, its people, and it includes its vulnerable people. We must integrate people suffering or in, who have any form of mental illness into productive, in a productive way. We must, you know, we must integrate them in a productive way. And for us to do that, we must have these conversations. And it has a direct line to the GDP. You know, most times we're talking about follow the money. Mental health and following the money have a nexus. There's a joining line. And so it's important that as we think about growing our economy, growing taxes, developing people, building businesses, we must be thinking about the mental health of the people who are doing this business, the entrepreneurs, the families, you know, and just all of us in general. Yusuf Kadrik said there is a need for experts to lend their voices towards creating a safe and harmonious community for women and people in general. <sighs> it's long time coming. This has been long time coming in the fact that, you know, mental health is part of our health, but it has been relegated to the background. People ordinarily don't think that mental health is as important as their physical health. And yes, we have made some progress so far with people talking about their mental health, but the stigma and discrimination attached to mental health and people living with mental illness is still very, is still very high. And of course in Nigeria, we are in election period. Um, this is a big risk I had to take to say, look, after the election, let's come and get a place where we can exhale and, and just, you know, have fun. But why the mental health conference today? January 5th, 2023, the, the president of, the, of, of our federation, President Mohamed Bouhari, gave us the most beautiful gift of all by passing the mental health law, bill into law, which you no, know, after 65 years of using the Lunacy Act of 1958, we finally now have a mental health law. This means that Nigerians' mental health is officially a priority. And so creating this mental health conference, which is our maiden edition, is to let Nigerians know about the benefits of that law, know what it, it all um, entails, and of course, talk about pertinent things that are important to our well-being, you know, family, um, our finances, relationship we have with people, and this is all what everybody should expect today in this mental health conference, and I'm really excited you know, that this is finally a reality.